Alrighty, well, hopefully this is going to work. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, man. I can't wait to get, um, I don't know, something well, a little bit better with the audio. I like the microphone, but I mean, I'm wandering around, so there's probably, you know, it gets loud, quiet, loud, quiet, whatever. Um, what am I doing right now? I'm popping on these little, yeah, I just, they weren't uh, appearing as nice. The, the purple ones are appearing a bit better for me. The, the lime green's not doing so much. Anyways, uh, this is all due to the fact that, and I'm going to say it again, ah, am I so flippin' happy? Look, man, this all came because John Longshore decided to comment about, is there any naval component to Dervelt Krieg? And it led to this me popping on um, little purple icons on my minigame. Why? Because I told you, man, a thousand freaking times, comments, oh, gosh, I just love these things. Why? Because it's, it's like, okay. So I decided, okay, well, I'm, for the next live stream, let's take a look and see if I can come up with, uh, you know, find out about naval, uh, uh, the naval aspect to your Valkyrie. Excuse me. So I go to the Grand Campaign, start taking a look into there. And there's some stuff, so we'll talk about it. There's some a little bit about submarine warfare and so on and so forth. Then... Um, I was like, well, I also want to start getting into, like, incorporating, like I said, more of the Grand Campaign, Grand Campaign into, um, into my game here. And lo and behold, I'm just flipping through the pages, and there's something on Russia talking about, um, I don't know what the heck are they called? O-P-O-L-C-H-E-N-I-E. I should put it, I'll put in a link. Opolchini. Um, brigades uh, and I think there uh, there was something else there were also oh, I don't know where the where my little page is oh N-A-R-O-D-N-O-E uh, Narodno uh, someone like Mianri Mike who can uh, um, speak Russian would be able to uh, understand this better or pronounce it better uh, um and they've got it uh, spelled differently than um uh, Dave Schroeder and Dervell Creek. But anyways, it's the People's Militia. And in Section 9-7, if you go to the Grand Campaign, I'm not going to read it out, but it says on the, on, and I wouldn't have seen this. And I'm like, you know what? This is going to add in also to my uh, narrative of how, in a weird way, uh, you know, the, well, not in a weird way, I, they just rolled lower than the Central Powers, lost the initiative for O2 November, so the um, the allies, the Entente, are getting a double turn in a sense. There's also been this massive uh, firing and, um, you know, there's been a huge shift uh, in thinking and personnel going on with the Russian command here. Uh, so this is going to be perfect. What it is, is for in Section 9-7, if you look in, in, into it, beginning in September uh, 1914, um, any... Russian occupied town or city hex, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, they can bring up a one for Opolcheni, or let's just call it the People's Militia, uh, please, because I don't want to just butcher the living hell out of it until I can pronounce it properly, which I may never do, but I hope so. Uh, our one for infantry brigades, and on the four, on the fourth turn of September, you're not allowed to move them. But from the fifth onwards, you're allowed to move four at a time. And beginning in 1915, you're allowed to start. Um, the Russian players allowed to start uh, converting, uh, combining one, uh, two one four uh, people's militia brigades into a three four, which I found interesting a three for um, a division, and he's got them written down like the 100th division, 101st, and so on and so forth, and you can start doing that. Um, but to, uh, to show that happening for every third replacement unit coming in when you start uh, before you've completed all the uh, going from brigades to divisions, um, you have to subtract one. I was like, oh, that sucks. I'm going to have to start doing that. But no, because I'm actually going to do it according to the rules. I know, I'm playing playing around with the rules of loose and goose. Who cares? Um, makes sense for me. Uh, is that uh, those replacement units are only reduced if you were making um, these uh, brigades and divisions from um, resource uh, 
points or whatever. I'm not doing that yet. So what I'm going to do for this narrative is I'm saying, okay, there's been a delay, like with the Russian response, there's been a massive change in personnel and so on and so forth. And part of this rethinking is calling up um, uh, the people's militia. And in a weird way, look, it's going to be a, a super rinky-dink small version of what uh, the central powers, primarily the Germans, let's be honest, have been stripping their fortresses of the garrisons, you know, and converting them into um, uh, into frontline units, which um, we're calling, um, oh my God, my mind is just going to jello. Um, come on, Chris. Uh, uh, free... Uh, uh, Kriegfrosch. No, that's the other guys. That's my freaking, um, Fry as, oh. ah, shit. Fortress, garrison, fortress, whatever that, anyways, we'll just, uh, I'm getting sidetracked. So that's going to be their little mini version. And, um, it, look, there's no such thing as, that's why I said we're going to talk about it in a minute. There's no such thing as a town hex, technically, like it's not listed. But what I'm assuming Dave Schroeder meant is any of these fortresses or any of these things that have uh, names like Oswich or whatever, because some fortresses don't, but there's no, it's, there's no nothing there, but there's obvious, that's obviously a town or whatever. So I'm going to allow, it doesn't matter, for goodness sakes, we're talking one, four brigades here, but this is the kicker. It did say Russian, oh shoot, well, this is Russian occupied now. That's why I'm looking at it. doesn't mean there's an actual person there, is it? Because we've taken it over. It's like we've had our, like in the weirdo narrative of what was going on historically, they would have already had, um, uh, you know, local elections that all of a sudden magically everybody's like, yeah, we love Russia type of stuff. So um, that this has been going on. So I think this may, I'm not saying it's going to save the Russians bacon. But I'm just saying I like the way that it's being tied into a narrative. So I can, I'm going to start popping. I'm going to pop in at the beginning of uh, 02 November, which is the uh, Russians' next turn. I'm going to allow them to put in a 1-4 uh, division here. Anyways, I'm just writing them all down, and, and that's why I'm using the purple things now. I used to use, but, yep, obviously not Lemberg. But uh, they've got Stanislaus. So I'm just saying this could help a little bit. And you know how many they're allowed to do? 23. It's not bad, man. Like, uh, I'm not allowed to re you know, like, I'll keep it off to the side, but I'm pretty darn happy. Oh, uh, darn it. What else was I going to say? Um, on a, yet again, connecting in with what the heck's going on, I'm, I've been looking at, um, taking a look at uh, what's been going on with the other fronts in November 1914 to see what the heck's been going on and also reading up. But I'll tell you one thing, man, Dave Schroeder's got a ton of stuff in that grand campaign thing about like you know what was going on with all the countries it's just a like it's just like a mini history book in there for goodness sakes uh, excuse me so i've been looking into that taking a look at what i really really want to start hammering like i've got a ton of pages to read over there man uh on bulgaria and whatnot and what was going on with the, like i want to figure out like um because they made a lot of gains in the first balkan war and um i think yeah it was they bit off a bit more than they could chew in the second kind of thing from what I've been reading. But I think for for a little tiny bit, they were, they were actually in control of Constantinople. I'm not sure about that. or pretty damn close. Um, so I'm just trying to take a look at what type of territory they were. Oh my gosh, there's just so many side things to, to be reading up on now. I found out that the Entente were like doing this crazy sweet deal uh, just to keep Bulgaria neutral, for Christ's sakes. And Bulgaria was like, Wait a flippin' minute. Maybe we should just remi This is, like I said, I'm just reading from stuff as well as from Dave Schroeder. Uh, wait a flippin' minute. Uh, maybe we should just remain neutral as long as possible if... <laughs> what's? I mean, if they're giving us that kind of deal, let's see what the heck the Central Powers would like to give us, uh, you know, t to really not become neutral. It's just all these neato things. And also, to tie it in, like, you know, swaying back and forth. Okay, it's going to be plus 5% if this has been going on, or minus 5%. And trust me, there's going to be some interesting things going on here. If, like, I'm letting everything happen normally on all the other fronts until we get to, you know, let's say uh, December, January, where th plans are going to be starting to be made and whatnot. But, I mean, Conrad has been sent down to um, 
demoted because remember, uh, uh, Svetozar, um, 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 yeah, I'm toast. Von Bonia, uh, Svetozar, Bon, oh my god, Berevich, good lord, Christopher. Um, yeah, I'm, what the hell, man? My mind just went to mush. Yeah, the music's fine, so it's not that. Uh, maybe I'll just have to get side, uh, pro it's just, there's, uh, eh. to be honest with you, yeah, there's like four trillion thoughts going on in my head right now, and I just gotta, maybe should have went uh, back to l just listening to Uranus or something like that, or Jupiter or whatever. Um, yeah. No, I shouldn't have went off into Serbia land is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, um, yeah, it's just there's so many little side things to look at. I'm just like, oh, oh. Um, yeah, 17 days to can game starting tomorrow, and I have to get that into gear um so i'm just writing this down um and like i was saying even yesterday with those like oh i don't feel like anxiety or whatever time management and blah 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 and here i am one day later i'm just like holy cow here comes the flood <laughs> uh, yep um yeah so this is gonna be fun i'm really glad i found this little uh nugget of uh I mean, it's only 23 strength points spread apart all over the flipping place, but it should be able to help plug up holes. And it's kind of like, um, you know, uh, uh, they're like core HQs with a bit of, um, well, less DMs the way I've got them set up, demoralization points. And, oh, yeah, there's another side thing I've got to start looking into as we start progress. Uh, I start progressing into this game. Demoralization points are going to start kicking in here man like uh, germany's at 314 i didn't realize but or uh russia i think i can't remember but there's like a something to run around 600 things start to get things start to start to wobble a bit uh, i'm not we're not here yet but holy moly like things are gonna you know maybe come 1915 you know in spring of that that's gonna be you know hmm, we'll see um yeah, i think that's about it i should really get back to yeah, I'm starting, like I said, with the Serbia thing in Bulgaria. I'm trying to figure out what territory they had at the end of the first um, uh, Balkan War, and then I'll try to replace that. And Because, uh, like, I'm trying to also pretend there's all other high levels going on here where, like, there's, you know, people like looking at Plan B, C, and D. Yes, I understand that uh, historically, you know, they went towards Gallipoli and whatnot, but that wasn't the original intention from what I've been reading. Um so, yes, I know they're getting supplies from Salonika, but I don't know too much about that. I've just only a couple of passages, uh, uh, supplies from uh, Salonika, you know, from Greece uh, into Serbia. But I'd like to get another one. Um, like I said, I've mentioned before, I'm going to see uh, who's in control of Corfu off to that side. I want to, like, avoid uh, the Italians up, up there. I can't remember the name of the, uh, the place that they have in Albania. But, uh, and Albany's a flipping mess. And I don't even know if what uh, who Meandering Mike is going to be in his, like, who he's representing uh, as Albania. Is he the king, the deposed king, who I think ends up, uh, or prince or whatever, ends up becoming, uh, yeah, that's right. He was prince outside of certain uh, parts of Albania, and he was the king inside. Uh, that's right. And, um, you know, he ended up fighting in the freaking, with the Germans on the front, for crying out loud. So is Meandering Mike going to be that uh, person? Because if he is, well, I'm not going to be talking about trying to get some kind of pseudo thing with um, Albania towards the Entente. I'm not asking them to become um, uh, non-neutral in the sense. But what I would like to say, like maybe he's going to rep be representative of uh, some kind of faction where I'm going to say, look, we're going to at least acknowledge your presence um, you know, uh, either way at the end of the war, uh, if you can just allow us to, like, I don't know, uh, I'm not saying combat troops, but maybe some engineering, uh, like I'll represent them as engineering units or something like that, so it'll still be expensive, I still have to do something, but what I'd like to do is get, uh, I'm sure, sorry, it's not on, it's not on the right map, just pretend, um, is to try to get some true uh, some supplies from Corfu. I'm gonna have to take a look. I know I have some different scale maps, and I can start taking a look at some of the roads and rail networks, and try to link up some supplies uh, to the Serb uh, the Serbians. Just another avenue that way. I'd also like to chit chat with the Bulgarians, but I don't have anybody representing the Bulgarians yet, because like I said, uh, uh, with the territory as well, I want to start trying to figure out. Like, okay, here we can give you this bit of territory and that bit of territory, but man, there's a lot of back uh things like i'm even going to say to the albanians uh look um you're screwed 
with a capital S. So this is the this is going to be the gimme here. We have other options, but you're going to make our lives a lot easier if you let us bring some troops, whatever, through here to get some supplies back and forth. Uh, it could end up being a, a dis, you know one of the worst things we ever. It could be like way worse than like tons of people getting killed for all these. I don't know. Like I'm just saying, it's just off in Wonderland. Um, let us do this, and we also want you to like publicly proclaim some kind of weird thing. I don't know what kind of, I have to look up uh, the treaties or whatever. But um, in other words, a non-aggression pact, is that it? In other words, you're not going to do anything towards us, but you may do something towards them or something like that. And we're going to legitimize you kind of thing. And if you don't, well, guess what? You're not going to exist at the, uh, like, at, you know, at the end of the war or whatever, because we're just going to wipe you off. Look at the way they were pushing Greece around, uh, from what I can see in a little ways. Like, just saying, like, Greece was like, hey, man, don't let, you know, land troops in their freaking whatever. Like I said, I'm just learning. I could be wrong about that. And they just did it anyways, the Entente. And this is after they've been bitching and whining about saying uh, the Germans, oh, my God, look what you did to Belgium. Huh? I'm not saying it's the same thing, like, about killing and whatnot or whatever. But it's like, well, you just invaded someone else's territory and you didn't seem... <laughs> I don't know, it's just, I just find this so fascinating. So I'm like, okay, well, use that for your little play thing. So I'm going to say that, that, like I said, with Albania, I'm going to be like, well, it's up to you. We can help you out or not. Um, but I'd also like to do that with Bulgaria. Uh, I'm not uh, saying, look, man, uh, we'll give you this big chunk of uh, territory all the way up. We're not going to say going to give you all the way all of Italy. Maybe we'll call it uh, the Turkish Trust Territory that Meandry Mike was mentioning there uh, on the live stream about... Um, uh, nasty little things that we're doing like you know in other words you're you're autonomous in in word only kind of thing and then you know that type of thing or is that way the the entente some way of um, having some kind of pro a little bit more of a proxy control of what goes on in the Balkans because they know obviously Russia is going to always have a uh, a big say. It's weird, eh, to think that, like, on the side note, here's your friend, Russia, but you're also petrified that they're going to have too much control uh, in the Balkans kind of thing or whatever, or, like, you know, connecting, uh, they were saying about, like, having a straight route into the Mediterranean and so on and so forth. Blah, 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 blah. I know. Yeah, I was just going to go on and start talking about the 23 um, people's uh, militia uh, brigades that I can spread some love around on this thing and try to help out the Russians in a little tiny way, for goodness sakes. Cheapers jumping. I don't even know this video worked, but I do know I had a mental meltdown in a little tiny bit. Okay, we'll see what happens. Hope you're having a good one. Bye.